Hey everyone, this is Philip, and this is the best of the week for the Everyday Fighter podcast. At the time, when I went to training 2009-2010, it's grappling close quarter training was it was there but in my opinion it was something that was lacking it was very deficient in in law enforcement and and i'm not saying anything bad about my agency because i have an amazing amazing agency i mean just very squared away agency but the the i think the thing that i thought that we needed and law enforcement in general needed was more of this understanding of close quarters and grappling um, for, for a number of reasons. And so for me, as I was looking around to better myself and find a way to improve my apartment, uh, my department, um, Gracie Jiu Jitsu was, to me, it was like, this is definitely an avenue that I have to look, look forward to. This is something that I think can really bring a lot to law enforcement for, for a number of reasons. And I've, you know, I've written articles about this in, in police one magazine, and I've, I've had many conversations about this, but the, the, what Gracie Jiu Jitsu does for law enforcement was very powerful for me. And I was like, man, I definitely want to bring this to my agency. And, and I think I've done that. And I, I've talked to a lot of people about this too. I think law enforcement is kind of still just on the brink of realizing how much Jiu Jitsu can, can help um, our profession. Mm. You know? Because ultimately, like if, if, if they don't have that, then what are the alternatives, I guess? Well, yeah, and that's a good point. That's one of many, I guess, aspects and layers to that is um if you don't have here's the thing and when it comes to law enforcement it's not like a normal quote-unquote fight or match there's so many other factors involved um first of all you don't know when the fight's going to come um you don't know when you're going to get that call the other thing is you're not there to you know you have rules and laws you need to contain a situation but you have to do it um without causing excessive damage to the opponent and that sort of thing. You have to do it with the thought of other people in mind. You have to do it with the thought of partners. You have to do it with the, you have to fight, quote unquote, defend yourself and control people while you have a Batman belt full of potentially lethal tools on you. I mean, there's so many, there's so many other mitigating factors um, in a law enforcement struggle than there is in just a competition or a street fight or what have you that that's why, I think jujitsu brings so much to the table. It's not the only thing, you know I mean? I'm still a big proponent of training in multiple styles for mar- for law enforcement, but I'm certainly a big proponent of making Gracie jujitsu part of the conversation. Hmm. So what made you start thinking that way in terms of, Oh, I think this is something that you actually use uh, on the job. Uh, was there, did you have, I mean, cause I, I don't know if you were still working in corrections uh, in corrections at the time. Uh, like, was it such that you, you witnessed something or was it, you know, you got through your own, own things that, that, that happened? Well, at that point, you know, I'd been a police officer for nine, almost 10 years. And so just looking back at my own personal experience, both in the jail and on, on patrol, if you need to control someone, um, most of the time, and this is something that this isn't new to anybody, but most of the time that's going to go to the ground. If mm-hmm. somebody is fighting it's very difficult to control someone standing you either need a wall as a grounding mechanism or the ground itself um so that was one reason i was like okay let's talk about this very close quarters grounded type of combat and that's when gracie jiu-jitsu hits me right away you know when i think of that gracie Mm jiu-jitsu so that that was you you see like how 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 uh situations have uh you know what what's occurred in the past it's like oh well this this would have helped him (laughs) yeah 100 percent (laughs) <laughs> you got okay yep so uh, i mean when you talk about these things you say you've written articles you say like oh this is something that you know talk to your superiors or other folks about about it what's the reaction that you get from from uh people that you talk to and i'm sure this, <laughs> this would apply you know to different different audiences right i mean there's every everyone's got everyone's got um their own motivations right and it's going to come yeah. out a little bit in their reaction to what you say it's so funny because it's a constant, it's, you know, you just never know. There's so many different opinions and there's people like, well, we can't do, we can't do jujitsu. We don't want these guys going to the ground, you know, or I'll hear them say, um, no, I'd rather just hit them or no, I, I, you've got tools. What do you need jujitsu for? You can't, you know, so you'll hear a lot of arguments and it's like, um, 
but then you also hear a lot of supporters too be like yeah that makes sense so it, it's a constant i, I want to say debate but you're just just constantly exchanging ideas and that sort of thing and ultimately even though even the ones that were a little you know slower to accept it ultimately have accepted and our our ground fighting program at my agency and really at a lot of agencies um has really improved using gracie jiu-jitsu so so in answer to your question of what's the response you have some people that are on board right away they're like yeah that makes sense it seems like that's the way the world is going ufc is very popular our the the guys that our officers contact are knowing at least a little bit of this stuff. Mm. Um, our officers should probably know it too. Um, and then and then there's the guys that are very I, I want to say old school, but I don't want to be like disrespectful. But they're like, ah, oh, no, I don't I don't like that. Let's just stay what, we, what we've been doing for years and years. So I mean, it's it's not something that comes easy. It's certainly not. I come in and say, hey, sheriff, or hey, major, I uh, Hoist Gracie's coming in town to teach law enforcement. I'm going to go do it, bring it back, and and we're going to be. Be, we're going to be the best department in the world. You got to talk to other agencies. You got to look at use of force scenarios we've had and and talk to them about the pluses and minuses. Let them make a decision, give you some feedback, and, and go from there. So it's it's been something that you know I, I work on constantly and um, I continue to work on it. Really, the point is not to follow the rule in an ideal world. The goal is to cross the street safely. So I apply this in the terms of our fighting or martial arts journey on the mat as well, where a lot of times when I'm teaching my uh, classes, I have to give it to them very basic, right? It's what I call the ones and twos. Here is this particular technique that can apply in this particular situation. It's like the ideal, quote unquote, ideal world, right? But I make sure as well that they understand it's not about just the technique in this particular situation. I mean, I, we can't teach every single situation, you know, for that particular technique that, to, to be used, right? I mean, it's just, there's no time and it's just an impossibility. And they would just get confused, right? We, we wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't be, be learning anything. But after they learn the ones and twos, I bring in as much reality as possible to the situation so that they understand that it's not about the technique. It's about you in a self-defense situation. It's about you surviving. Or if in a competitive situation, it's about you hitting your opponent and not getting hit back, right? Forget about the technique and how you learned it in an ideal vacuum it's about, let's use those moves. Let's use how you moved your body in that vacuum, but now apply it in the real world, right? Where you're getting resistance, where you're getting people actually trying to hit you back as well. And ultimately, you find that the goal, again, is not about them learning one, the ones and twos. It's about them being able to protect themselves or to do um, the, the best they can, perform the best they can in the competition. Mm -hmm.